Hello students, welcome to NAC Biology. This is Neelavati, your biology lecturer. So today we are going to talk about one beautiful, quite a difficult topic that is from chapter Principles of Inheritance and Variation. The topic name is Crisscross Inheritance. Okay, come let's start. So one thing we have to keep it in our mind that all X-linked recessive disorder shows crisscross inheritance. Okay, let me write that. Now the question is, what is X-linked disorder? Okay, first let us understand what is X-linked disorder. Then I will tell you exactly what is X-linked recessive disorder. Okay, so we all know that human body is made up of cells. Obviously, it consists chromosome also. Suppose if I take one cell, let's imagine this is one cell. It consists how many pair of chromosome? Do you know? Obviously, it is 23 pair. If I just tell the number 46 chromosome. So this is one pair, this is second pair, this is third pair. So like that I can write 23 pair. Let me name it 1, 2, 3 like this. Okay, let's assume this is the 22nd pair and this would be the 23rd pair. So in this set of chromosome, 1 to 22 pair, that is 1 to 22 pair, what you are seeing here, they are considered as autosomes. Okay, and the last pair, what you are seeing now? So, this is the 23rd pair. So, it is called sex chromosome. You all know about this. So, this sex chromosome determines the sex of an individual. If it is X and X, then this determines the individual is female. If it is X and Y, yes, your answer is right. It determines it is a male. Okay, now let me come to the point. What exactly X-linked disorder? So in this X chromosome, suppose if I draw X chromosome only, say for example, this is one chromosome, let me name it as X chromosome. So obviously here also the DNA is present. So in the DNA, the genes are present. So if any gene which is showing abnormal protein because we all understood about the molecular basis of inheritance that is transcription translation process also. So whatever the gene is present when it undergo transcription it produces RNA that is mRNA and when it undergo translation it produces a protein. Suppose if it is a normal protein obviously the gene is normal. Imagine the protein what you are getting here if it is an abnormal protein. So this is abnormal protein, then obviously how it result? It is from this abnormal gene, then such genes are called defective gene. If it is present on the X chromosome, we call it as X link disorder. Hope I am very clear about this. If any defective gene present on 1 to 22 pair, then we call it as an autosome link disorder. If it is present on X or Y chromosome, it is called sex link disorder particularly on X chromosome, then it is called x link disorder. Then what is recessive disorder? So we all understood about the Mendelian laws as well as what Mendel said and all. Okay. So now we have even understood about the dominant as well as the recessive condition. So here what these diseases are telling. First, let me take the example of these kind of diseases like hemophilia and color blindness. So both these disorders are recessive disorder that are located on X chromosome. Therefore, they are X-linked recessive disorder. Okay. So why it is called recessive? These diseases, they start showing the symptoms in a female only when they are present on both the X chromosome. Imagine if it is a girl. So here two X chromosomes are present. So both these chromosomes should show the defective gene. Okay, that is abnormal protein has to produce from her body. Then only she starts showing the symptom. That is, she is affected. Then only we consider as affected. Okay, so here the abnormal gene is present. Suppose in another scenario, if there is a girl, if here in her body, one X chromosome is showing the normal protein or normal gene and another X chromosome showing the abnormal. AB stands for abnormal. Just assume like this. Okay then this girl cannot show the symptoms because it is a recessive disorder 
but she is having this gene only on one chromosome right therefore she will be considered as a carrier carrier female but it won't happens in the case of a male as in the case of male only one x chromosome is present therefore if one x chromosome is showing any defective gene imagine the abnormal protein is producing on this gene that is on this x chromosome then this individual will be affected male if he has to consider as a normal means the gene should be normal on x chromosome okay hope you are getting my point now we have understood certain basics now let's talk about exactly what criss cross inheritance means okay to make you understand let me take the example of a parent first Yes, he is a father and she is a mother. Here, the father is having this defective gene. That means he is an affected person. So, let me take an example of her color blindness so that you can understand it better. What is exactly crisscross inheritance means. Okay. So, he is now a color blind father. He is a color blind. So, to make you understand, once again, I am just coloring his eyes. But in reality, his eyes will be normal. Only the gene will be defected. He cannot able to distinguish the red color, blue color like that. What normal individuals will do. But here to make you understand students, I am just coloring like this. Okay. Yes. Now the mother is having a normal gene. That means she is a normal woman. Then how we are going to write the genotype? If he is affected, obviously on X chromosome, we can write just XC. Because it is a color blind gene and Y chromosome is as it is. And here on the mother, both X chromosomes are showing the normal gene. So, this is what the genotype. Now, if you have to take a gamete from this, how you are going to take the gamete? Just recall what we have studied in principles of inheritance chapter that is uh, while talking about the Mendelian laws and all while crossing the tall plant and dwarf plant. Can you remember? Let me show here only once again. When the plant was tall, pure tall, then its allele were capital T and capital T. So, by that time you were just taking only one T as a gamete, right? That is understood. So, in the same way, when it is heterozygous tall, that means one is capital T, another one is small t, then what we were doing, we were taking it as a separate gamete, capital T as one gamete, small t as another gamete. So, here also we need to do the same thing. So, let me write the gametes first. So, here Xc is one gamete and y is another gamete in the case of father whereas in the case of mother both are xn and xn therefore if you just write one gamete as xn that is enough that is understood so now what would be the possible offspring in f1 generation let me uh, write that also yes when this gamete xc combines with xn this gamete then the offspring is female xc and xn are genotypes so, she is what? She is a carrier daughter because she is not having defective gene on both X chromosome. One is showing the defective gene, another one is normal gene. Therefore, she is not showing any symptoms but she is having this gene, right? Therefore, we can consider as carrier. Suppose, if this Y gamete combines with this Xn, then the offspring would be son. But the son is having the normal gene on X chromosome, therefore is a normal son. So, this is what F1 generation offspring. Right? Now, let's assume this daughter, she has grown older and when she get married to a normal man, then what would be the offspring? What would be the possibility? Let me show it in next page. Okay, let me draw once again the carrier daughter. She was having the genotype of XC and XN. Then I will show you what would be the next offspring when it combines with the other gametes of the person. Okay. Yes, she is a carrier daughter. And when she get married to a normal man, his genotype is XN and Y. And her genotype is XN and XC. What would be the gamete? Once again, let me 
write it again xn and xc we need to write it separately because both are showing the different genotype and here also xn and y okay so what would be the offspring in f2 generation let me write that also f2 generation means their children okay suppose when this gamete xn combines with another x of the male so both are showing the normal genes that is xn and xn so the offspring is female only but she is a normal female right suppose if the same gamete instead of combining with xn if this get combines with the y gamete then the offspring would be male right xn and y but he is also normal male suppose instead of xn if this gamete xc if it combines with xn okay let me take another color to make you understand once again yes if this xc combines with the xn then also the offspring is female only but one is having the carrier i mean one is having the defective gene another one is normal but the daughter is obviously she is a carrier daughter carrier daughter to these parents not the old parents what we have discussed just now okay suppose instead of the xn if this gamete combines with the y now see xc and y so the son but is a affected son see here this daughter is normal the son is also normal and this daughter is having the gene but she is not showing the symptom but she is as a carrier but here what you are seeing the last boy he is having this gene therefore he become the color blind okay so what you have understood till now so is a color blind let me write is a color blind now if i just go back to the first generation of the parent okay so let me go back here so here the father that is he will be the grandfather to this son he was the color blind okay now the gene is passed to his daughter not it to his son right but instead instead to the son the gene is now passing to the grandson okay hope you are getting let me summarize it once again yes see here so first he was a father he was having the gene that is a defective gene so he was a color blind so he is a color blind father so the gene from the color blind father directly goes to daughter but she was not showing the symptom because only one gene was passed therefore she was a carrier daughter in context of this son now she is a carrier mother right to this father she will be a carrier daughter but to this son she will be a carrier mother now from the carrier mother the gene is directly passing into the son okay that means directly from the father the gene is not passing to the son it is to the grandson it is passing now when you just take to this generation he will be the grandfather he is a grandfather and he will be the grandson okay so the gene is passing from grandfather to the carrier daughter or carrier mother and then to the grandson so such type of inheritance is called criss cross inheritance that's it and you may getting a doubt suppose mom instead of two son if they are having the six children six children means six sons so what would be the possibility then also the 50% chance 50% possibility out of six son six sons three sons will be having the chances of getting this defective gene so here the gene will not be passed into the daughter of the f2 generation so only the affected individuals will be the son that is the male okay so this type of inheritance we call it as a criss cross inheritance hope you like the video if you liked it please hit the like button and we will meet you in the next class thanks for watching